before you got here, we were talking about becoming a doctor. Um, and we were talking about how long it takes to become a doctor. And how you go to college and medical school and internship and residency. Um, and you gotta have good grades. You gotta have good grades. What kind of grades do you get? I had straight A's in second grade. Straight A's in second grade? You're off to a great start. Good for you. Okay. It takes, let's see, four years of college. Who's the math person here? You're answering everything. I don't want to keep calling on you, but you're really good. So you're math? You like math? All right, so you're ready to do this adding? You want to do it in your head or you need a piece of paper? Do it in your head? All right. So, four years of college. Four years of medical school, one year of internship, two years of residency. What are we up to so far? That's gave me the answer. And then one year of something called fellowship. Twelve. So that's like your specialty training. So it, it's twelve years of school after high school. I always like coming back to Kramer because this is like home to me. Because when I was your age, that parking lot outside where the trailers were, I used to play baseball in that parking lot. I grew up in East Camden. Uh, it was a place called Stockton Station. It's no longer there. So who plays football here? You play football? You play for Camden Powell? Everybody knows where Camden Powell plays football at? Down, down the hill in Stockton Station where the turf fields are? Like there used to be a lot of apartments back then. So that's where I grew up at. I went to Forest Hill Elementary School until fifth grade. Then after I graduated from Forest Hill, I went to St. Joe's for middle school, the Catholic school right over across on Federal Street. I went there for sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. When I graduated from St. Joe's, then I went to Camden Catholic, which is in Cherry Hill, and graduated from Camden Catholic. I went to college. I went to college in Baltimore, Maryland at a school called Morgan State University. I studied business administration there. Uh, after I graduated from Morgan, I returned back home to Camden, and I started teaching. I taught here actually all eight years of my time in Camden. I taught fourth grade. I was in room 302 up in the corner upstairs. I don't know who's in the teacher in that room right now. Uh, while I was here, I went back to school uh, for four years, and I got my master's degree. So I taught during the daytime, went to school at night, uh, got a master's degree in school administration. Uh, after teaching eight years in 2000, I got a job in Salem to be a vice principal at an elementary school. I went there for two years, and then after two years of being in Salem, I got a job as a vice principal in Lawnside, where I'm at now, in 2002. I worked there till 2010 as the vice principal, and in 2010, but, so while I was working as the vice principal, uh, I went back to school again to work on my doctoral degree. So in 2010, I received a doctoral degree in school administration. At the same time, I became the superintendent. So in 2010, I became superintendent of Lawnside School District. So I've been superintendent of Lawnside for eight years. I became interested in being a doctor when I was, um, I was actually 12. And um, I started working for a pharmacy Right? Does everybody know what a pharmacy is? Yes. Right? So I started working for a pharmacy, and I was a delivery boy at a pharmacy. I've heard that, right? When you're from Cam, you can't do X, Y, and Z. You won't be X, Y, and Z, or whatever. As I told you, if I grew up here in East Camden, and I grew up and be a superintendent of the school district, there's nothing that you can, pers can dream that you want to be that you can't accomplish. In fact, I tell people, I, I honestly argue from the opposite point. I tell people some of the greatest things come out of Canada, particularly when you talk about education. So as I said, I worked here in this building for eight years. The eight years I worked here, there are 12 of us that were teachers that are now school administrators. Two of us are superintendents, three of us are assistant superintendents, and the rest are either principals or vice principals. So that was the teachers that were in these classrooms here, educating students that some may be your parents. I don't know who all your parents. I certainly know Teron's dad, right? So don't ever let anybody tell you because you're from Camden that you have a, 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 a what you would call a ceiling or a plateau that you can reach. 
right? So this young man says he wants to be an astronaut. I have no doubt in my mind that if he truly wants to be an astronaut, he'll be an astronaut. You tell me you want to be a surgeon. As I said, we all are going to get old one day. I take comfort in knowing that one day I might be on the surgery table. You're going to have to have a life-saving operation. I want you to be that doctor in that room that's going to operate on me. Because I have the confidence that you're going to do what it takes to be the best surgeon in the world. All right? So don't limit yourself and don't let anybody ever tell you that because you're from Canada, you can't be whatever it is that you want to be. Alleviating pain. What does alleviating mean? Anybody? Yes, sir. Releasing. Exactly. Exactly. Making somebody feel better. So I like making people feel better. Right? That's one of my favorite things. So um, I take care of people with pain problems. Uh, and people come to me and I see them in the office. And they tell me about problems with their pains. And I listen to them carefully. And you take a good history because the patient tells you what's going on with them. And when they tell you what's going on with them, then you can figure out what the problem is. And then maybe you can give them the medication to try to help them. Sometimes I'll give them exercises to do to help them make their body well. Remember when we just had everybody stand up, right? And everybody had to do the stretching exercise, right? So that's something that sometimes we have people do who might have back problems. And we talk to them and we say, look, you're gonna to have to do some specific exercises to stretch your back, to keep your back healthy. Three o'clock, what time square here? 250. Bell rang at 250, school's out. I'm done with school, I'm going home play Fortnite. Huh? Right? So I'm not doing no homework. My teacher gave me homework. I'm not worried about that. So either you don't do the homework or what do some people do? They rush through it just to say I got it done. So then when your mom and dad ask, did you do your homework? Yeah, I did it. Your teacher says, did you do your homework? Yeah, I did it. You did it, but all the answers were wrong. So what good is doing it if you didn't do it right? So like I tell young people, it's better to be the last one done and have them all right than to be the first one done and have them all wrong. Okay? Do you come to school every day? Yes. You do. You pay attention in class? Yes. Do you get straight A's? Yes. Dr. Johnson, I didn't know. Look, I'm telling you. I didn't know she got straight A's, but I know the formula works. So if I ask any student those three questions and the answer to those three questions are yes, I guarantee you they're going to be a straight A or maybe a B student. 